by the grace of Christ, let us continue by the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3. We are at verse 13, chapter 3 of the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus came from Galilee, the Jordan, to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry, and the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you on the hands that will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, I guess it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness, having seen a great light, and for those dwelling the region and shadow of death, on them a light was, has dawned. From that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is on hand. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, and the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching the synagogues and proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. Amen. Now the time has, co the time has come for God to reveal His only begotten Son, the God in the flesh, and the preordained time when He became 30 years old, having preceded six months before by the ministry of John the Baptist. Now Jesus of Nazareth came to be baptized the waters of Jordan, a, a baptism of repentance. He's going to humble himself as he humbled himself and became obedient to the death. And this is a message now to become obedient to 
the word of God and the voice of God but a, a person may not obey unless he loves the Lord Jesus Christ loves the Father he knows that God the Father sent him and he's doing all the wills Oh, he's fulfilling all the uh, performs all the will of the, his father the one who performs my will he's the one who loves me no one can be obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ unless he loves Christ and no one can love Christ unless the, the love of God the Father is poured out in his heart all the other things are insignificant the very first commandment you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart mind soul and strength everything starts from that love our love to Christ in our heart is the one who's going to help us make a decision of death to obey the the written word of God and to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us but only the ones who are led by the Holy Spirit are children of God and the Lord Jesus Christ here who is our example he's our, our model he humbled himself to receive the baptism the one who was sinless by the hands of John the Baptist because that was the righteousness of God the Father and that's our righteousness as well obedience to the Word of God and John the Baptist resisted to baptize Jesus he said I need to be baptized by you but the Lord Jesus Christ he left no margin of or freedom of disobedience here you need to do the fulfill all the righteousness of God and that is the righteousness of God it happened this amazing event the baptism of God the flesh by John the Baptist in order for God to reveal the Lord Jesus Christ to all the powers heavenlies on the earth and on the world and when he was baptized the Holy Spirit in form of a dove came and sat on the Lord Jesus <coughs> And John the Baptist, uh, by the revelation that God had given, to whom you see the Holy Spirit sitting on him, he is my only begotten son. And when he saw that, he believed that is the Son of God. And then the heavens were opened, and the voice of God the Father was heard before all the powers, all heavenlies on the earth and the underworld this is my son my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased why was God the Father well pleased with the son because he was submitted to the Word of God and that's likewise happens with us when we submit ourselves to the Word of God and now after this submission the devil is going to come to tempt the Lord Jesus resist the devil and the Word of God says that Jesus was led by the Spirit according to the will of God the Father into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil that was the sole reason you cannot be approved unless you're tempted there's no way brother for the blessing of God the Father to continue your life unless you're tempted by the devil in order to resist and he will flee from you if you do not resist him he's not gonna flee you and there is a rough warfare we are conducting 
and the Lord needed to prepare for that. And as the Word of God encourages us to suffer for Him, and the Lord Jesus Christ, He fasted 40 days and 40 nights in order to become weak. No one who is strong needs to defeat the devil by their strength. The Apostle Paul says, only when I'm weak, I'm strong by the power of Christ. God said Christ weak. And when a person uh, submits the word of God, he doesn't deny the name of Christ in his weakness, then God sets him up in strong. Let us understand this, brethren. Are you weak? Or you are weak and you need to confess this. Say this to Christ. I cannot do anything, Christ, in order to become strong. For 40 days and nights he fasted in order to have all fleshly power leave him and be emptied out of that that he had gained in his family life in Nazareth 30 years with his dad and mom now all human power need, he needed to be devoid of all that human power and God did not allow that temptation unless the full weakness of the Lord Jesus Christ will be fulfilled. God did not allow on the first, the second, and the third day of Jesus fasting. But when he completed all his work of being devoid of human power, then God allowed the devil in his freedom to tempt Jesus in order for God the Father to be glorified. He got a hungry after 40 days and now deserted the flesh because God, if a person is, has a trinary nature of spirit and soul and body, and now the desire of the flesh entered Jesus. If you're the Son of God, because God the Father said, Here's my beloved Son. The my. And now Satan comes to doubt the Word of God in his life. And this is what he always does. He's trying to doubt the Word of God, the weakness of people. But the weakness of Jesus is the power of God. If you are the Son of God, tell to these stones to become bread in order to satisfy your hunger. And he needs to reply by the Word of God. There is no other way to resist here but by the Word of God. And what's the obedience of the Word of God? The love of Christ to his Father. And now our love to the Lord Christ. And then we submit ourselves and then the God, and then God, uh, He brings it in our lives, living. He do not study ahead of time what you're going to say, because I'm going to give you a word of God, and the Holy Spirit is going to speak. Tell to the stones to become bread. Because it is written, by man that does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds the mouth of the Lord. And this is a major revelation. God provides His word so that people will be fed by it. And the devil continues. He continues in his attacks. If indeed you are the Son of God, Now that you are in the pinnacle of the temple, throw yourself down. And since you use the word of God, and I, the devil, I'm going to use the word of God as well to attack you. Because it is written, he will command his angels concerning you on the hands that will bury you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. He's cunning. He's wicked. 
but Jesus and his absolute weakness he's filled with the power of the Holy Spirit it is written again you shall not tempt the Lord your God how serious are these three replies that the Lord gave the men shall not live by bread alone but he enjoys the care the defending and support of God the Father when he's humble he does not tempt God by revealing himself and third by the desire of his eyes and then the third temptation came the devil took him to the very high mountain showed him what the kingdoms of the world and the glory and he said to him all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me this is going to happen but it's not going to happen by the devil God is going to give him all the kingdoms as the Lord proclaimed to me was being given all authority and now the devil though is trying instead to tempt him by desire of his eyes because as he's saying a tr one truth here that all these kingdoms have been given to me as the devil said but the Lord Jesus Christ replied again by the word of God you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve the love of the Lord Jesus to his father gives him the ability to resist the devil and then the devil finally left him the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to us is our power is the authority that we have but because we cannot love him because we're humans as God wants us to be in our human nature we need to plead the Father in the name of Jesus Christ in order for our joy to be full to say Father let us say this today Father fill our hearts by the Holy Spirit in order to love Christ with our power strength and mind and everything that is inside of us make us Lord to love you only God may help us to love Christ in this way and when we love Christ in this way then in the absolute humility of our weakness then will come the absolute strength and lifting up of the Father let me say this one more time Simon do you love me son of Jonah more than these do you love me and Peter replied I love you Lord can you say that not with words but with words now with d works and deed and now the Lord Jesus he needs to draw near to God according to the promise of God which is written word John the Baptist ministry is ending and he's arrested and he's going to be decapitated and the Lord Jesus is going to continue now in the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali is written the way of the sea beyond the Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light for those dwelling in the region in shadow of death on them a light has dawned from the Galilee of the Gentiles the light has dawned from his environment from your environment the sun of righteousness would arise from your house from your family from the church that God has added you and set you in and once you drew he drew near to God he the Word of God started in the ministry of God 
is starting to preach on the Galilee of the Gentiles. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The message which is the precondition of the visitation of God and revival of God. The message and the preaching of truth. And now the will of God is to be fulfilled. It is expedient. And it will be fulfilled there in the Galilee of the Gentiles. God had said Simon and Andrew who loved fishing know that later on after the resurrection of Jesus he fell into a trap I'm going I'm going fishing because he loved fishing and God drew near to them and with very simple words he invited them to follow him isn't this amazing you cannot follow somebody unless you love him what's happening in their hearts these people love fishing a lot and somebody goes to them and he's telling them abandon fishing and I'll make fishers of men not in words that's love not in words and in tongue by works and truth leave what you love Andrew and Simon and love Christ instead this is the action of God though I would dare to say that an unknown man how do you leave everything behind and you follow that person how did you leave your house and you came here today it's a miracle you came to hear the Word of God you came desiring the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord is doing great majestic things they're leaving their fishing behind all the activities involved with that they will never stop following him even though Peter on one occasion when he was left alone he fell into the trap of fishing and again the Lord Jesus Christ asked him if you love if you love them do you love brother Christ I know that you love him since you're here today but repent because the kingdom heaven is at hand seek from God let us ask from God to fill our hearts with his own love the true love uh, he saw two other brothers uh, the John and James as they were sorting out their nets and Christ invited them too and they left the ship the father and their fishing again they followed a stranger I would dare to say that the, they followed this person because John the Baptist confessed that he is the one who takes the sins of the world the issue now today and the great miracle today is with us today we abandoned everything but anyone who leaves a father and mother siblings fields works because of Christ Christ confesses you who left everything I want to give you a hundredfold here on the earth and eternal life in the heaven it's not in vain what we did today it is not insignificant 
or small it is majestic it is the work of God it is the action of God remember the continuous of James John and Peter and Andrew to understand how great the work of God is that's been performed in their lives and for us today I didn't realize what the future was for them Simon son of Jonah was going to become the apostle Peter the Christ was going to build his church Andrew was going to become apostle Andrew in the first apostolic church James and John John was going to become the, f the beloved disciple of Christ and James was going to become an apostle of sanctification but they haven't understood and I'm going to tell this brethren as God is telling you brother you don't realize what God is going to do in your life if you remain back then it was a critical time of the coming of Christ of his earthly ministry now is a critical time of ending of human history we are living the last generation whether we know it or not everything is ending but you do not know what God is going to do in your life if you love Christ with your power soul and mind and heart things that we cannot imagine soul could never imagine as he was a persecutor and blasphemer who persecuted with great zeal the church of Christ what was going to happen in his life later on and thus dear brethren let us remain humble humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God what certain is humility precedes the glory the the person who humbles himself he cries he mourns he prays but God is gonna lift that person up and we cannot understand what God is gonna lift you up you cannot understand you cannot understand you cannot imagine only one thing my God help me to love you with my power all my power strength and mind in order to submit myself to your holy word and be led by your Holy Spirit there were now all those disciples were they submitted the word of Christ they were fishers Simon and Andrew who loved the net, their nets and fishing they abandoned it John and James who loved the belongings of the ship and the father and the relatives they abandoned everything they followed Christ as well and now the Lord Jesus Christ he's starting his ministry repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand <clears throat> he started to teach us and pr reveal the sound doctrine and the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven to heal every illness and every disease dear brother let us think a little bit and insignificant young man 30 years old in the eyes of God was his beloved son a man without nothing special he wasn't even educated as a person he started to teach he started to preach and the powers of God the Father to be revealed in him and the result was 
was shocking. The reputation was spread in all the vicinity. And this is the work of God. The very first thing is to spread the reputation of his servant he is pleased with. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus Nazarene. I said I was pleased with him, says the Lord. I place my spirit in him. He's a person who doesn't shout. He does again it he does again it quarrels. He does a grumble. He doesn't gossip. And he does not command himself. But what does he do? He is meek and quiet, humble, full of understanding, humble and meek in his spirit and obedient to the Word of God. And immediately the reputation spread of his work. It is God who does that. God acts, spreads his reputation in strange ways. Because Jesus, of course, knows the continuous of the things, but I'm sure Peter and James and Andrew, they saw suddenly the one they were following to do great things, majestic things before God to order the wind to order the sea, to set demonized people free, to heal diseases, and to see the reputation of the Lord spreading all Syria and people coming from all over the place, drawing near to Christ. So, as they were suffering from different illnesses, from afflictions of the devil, as they were demonized, paralyzed, innumerable people, and they were experiencing this, the fishers, Peter, James, Andrew, and John, and all of them to be healed. and God to stir up the hearts of those people. From Decapolis, Nazareth, from, from Naphtali, from Zebulun, and everybody coming to Jesus Christ. Within a few days, that did not last many years. As John was decapitated, the ministry was delivered to the hands of the Lord Jesus and great work and God is going to do great work in your life that you came here to do. If you love Christ, if you seek and ask God to fill you with his love, don't love anything else and even more accurately love Christ above all. It cannot happen humanly speaking. The work of God cannot happen humanly speaking, but by the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not luck. There is no luck, only the favor of God. The prosperity of God instead is the one who brings the results. Today, with in boldness, I'm telling you, the Lord told me to ask you, and myself included, do you love Christ, brother? Do you abandon everything for him? Do not rush to tell him, but pray to him. Seek Christ instead. Because whatever we say, yes, yes, I love you. Those are human words of weakness. But God wants 
words of power of wisdom understanding by the Holy Spirit says Christ do you love Christ if you love Christ and if you seek to love Christ indeed not with sentiment but with devotion dedication with humility with seeking in prayer in the fullness of the Holy Spirit by work and truth then those things that eyes have not seen then to hearts of people have not been lifted up and ears of people have not heard those things you're going to experience and, and hear and see and you hear at all times and you can experience those things <clears throat> today are uh, today is part of the first few days of the year of 2018 to submit himself to resist the devil so he will flee from us to draw near to God to cleanse ourselves from sins and violations to suffer with the people of God as Moses as he considered greater treasure from the treasure of Egypt to suffer himself with the people of God you're gonna suffer with the people of God but you will be blessed but with a precondition that you will love the Lord your God is not only Christ the Lord your God he needs to be your beloved of your soul look and say out of you do you love him the answer is not that much but the con in continuance of that desire is to say Christ help me to love you with my mind heart soul and strength help me Lord fill my heart with your love father make me Lord to love you as you want me to love you and love later on to your brother as Christ loved you to, to fulfill his will of his father in fact and ask yourself what do you love most so you put Christ on top of that and put Christ on top of that And that secret and the sacrifice you're gonna make for Christ is where Christ is. Amen. Help us, Lord.